Hey there, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So today we're going to dive into point and figure charts, believe it or not. I'll show you how the bullish percent index works, and then we're going to look at the bullish percent indexes for the indexes and sectors. Largely, they are bullish and show that most stocks have higher highs working. It's the lower lows we're watching out for. We'll look at the percentage above 200-day EMA indicators. They're more mixed, and the high-low indicators show that new highs are concentrated in just a few sectors. Let's hit the charts. So I'm going to start with, surprisingly enough, a point and figure chart. And that's because I want to work my way towards the bullish percent indexes because what we're seeing here is we had a pullback about two weeks ago. We had a bounce last week and we're stalling this week. And so we've created a re reaction low and that low holds the key for, it's the first support level to watch. And if you start being seeing breaks below that low, that would be negative. And we can quantify that low with a simple PNF chart usually because PNF charts are made up of X's and O's. And this is going to lead up to the bullish percent index, which actually quantifies that. So a chart is either on a PNF double top breakout or PNF double bottom breakdown, either one. Now there are other patterns at work, but the double top breakout, double bottom breakdown are the two most basic patterns in the PNF chart world. And it's either one or the other. You can't have one with, it, it can't, it's got to be one or the other. And I'll show you what I mean. So here we can see this decline in February. And we can see this column of O's here in March exceeding the prior column of O's down. And that's a double bottom breakdown. And so we continue to you know, bounce, double bottom breakdown, bounce, double bottom breakdown, bounce, double bottom breakdown, so forth. And then you can see things changed in March in the second half when we got above the high of that previous X column. So that there was a double top breakout. And that's basically a PNF buy signal, if you will. And then we had a pullback and then we had a, another breakout that doesn't do anything to the other. The other signal is still valid until it's reversed. And then we got to this point here in May. And in May, we actually had a double bottom breakdown there where we broke below the prior O column. But that reversed quickly, and you had a double top breakout. And then there's June starting with the six. And now we're just, we've had a pullback and we've had a bounce. So the active signal here is a double top breakout for SBY. And this low here, 300, nice round number there, becomes a support level of sorts. And if you get an O column that breaks that prior low of the O column, that's a double bottom breakdown. So Stock Charts calculates and publishes the bullish percent indexes for the S&P 500, some other indexes, and the sector SBDRs. And this is a really handy uh, calculation and indicator to use because it tells you how many stocks basically have higher highs, and that's going to be the double top breakout. There's Apple, double top breakout, and how many have lower lows working. So if Apple goes below this O column here, then that's going to be a lower low and a double bottom breakdown. Now, I'll just go through a couple of these charts here. These are some of the top S&P 500 stocks. So Apple has a double top breakout. We can see Adobe had, look at that big quadruple top breakout in April and continues to work its way higher, but getting extended. This is some sort of high pole working here. And then if you look at Amazon, it's bullish. You know, you had that head fake there, but then a triple top breakout. Berkshire, man, this pattern's way too long to make any sense of it. Cisco, you can see Cisco has the double top breakout there in March and then a fresh one in April, and it's stalling now. And there's that O column to watch for a double bottom breakdown. 
And then Disney. So Disney has an active double bottom breakdown in contrast to the others. So you can see here, it got the double top break out there in May and a higher high in June. But then there's that O column and it broke below that prior O column. So even though it had a bounce, it didn't get past this prior X column. And so we're on an active double bottom breakdown. So now that you understand how these signals work, let's look at the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 and then in the respective sectors that are on double top breakouts, higher highs, and the percentage there on double bottom breakdowns, lower lows. So here's a chart of the S&P 500 with the S&P 500 bullish percent index. And that shows the percentage of stocks that are on double top breakouts, 72.2%. So that means the other 27.8% are on double bottom breakdowns. So the vast majority are on double top breakouts and have higher highs working. Now for signals, by the way, this is OEX, the S&P 100, 79%. And this is the NASDAQ 100, 74%. So basically, I don't really look at divergences uh, very much. I find they give kind of a lot of false signals. Uh, but I use three indicators to try to get an aggregate signal or a composite signal. Because if you just use one, you can get whipsaws like you can see. This move below 40% looked bearish for the S&P 500 in May, but you can see that the S&P 100 did not confirm, and the NASDAQ 100 barely got below 60, didn't even go below 50%. So those two held, and the market moved higher into June. But right now I'm watching these three, and if we get a move below 40%, so if you get 40% or fewer stocks on double top breakouts, that means 60% or more are on double bottom breakdowns, lower lows. And you would get 60% on lower lows. That means the majority are in some sort of a downtrend, and that is negative. So that's what I'm watching for this intermediate term uptrend that we currently have in play right now. It's valid, but watch out. If you break below 40% in two of these three, that's going to be a negative. So how do the sectors look when we rank them by their bullish percent index value? And that's what I've done here. I've got a chart list, and I've got the bullish percent indexes for the symbols there, and I've got the S&P 500, and it is sorted by the value of the bullish percent index. It's sorted by this value here. You click that column to sort. So the S&P 500, 72.2% are on bullish percent, bullish double top, breakouts. And the stronger sectors would be finance, communication services, technology, materials, energy. Now, I think the bullish percent index really is kind of an intermediate term indicator. It's not a real long term indicator because all it takes is a higher high to get a bullish percent index, a double top breakout going and a lower low to get a double bottom breakdown. Uh, but we can get an idea by the majority of stocks with these higher highs or higher lows, how the sector is doing. And overall, they're doing good on, based on this indicator. You can see the weakest is real estate at 55%. And then you can see we've got industrials, 70%. That's okay. Staples, 67%. Consumer discretionary, 65%. Healthcare, 64%. So overall, these ones are still doing good. It's when you start to get readings below 40% that you're starting to see a lot of lower lows in the sector, and that is a negative sign because you're either getting a pullback or a trend reversal. So what's happening over at trendinvestorpro.com? Well, I'm darn glad you asked. So what I did on Friday was I put out some market timing models for the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, the S&P mid-cap 400, and the S&P small-cap 600. And these are based on five breadth indicators. And this is a quantified model that has been back-tested in Amy Broker. Now, I am using breadth data from Norgate, 
because it's what I can get to quantify and back test back to 2001. And I'm looking at 80% for a breath thrust. I'm looking at the percentage above the 100 day, percentage above the 150 day moving average, percentage above the 200 day, and high low percent. And these are five, what I would call, or four are definitely long term indicators. And you can see these three ones in the middle, they're trend indicators. The more stocks in the index you get in an uptrend, the stronger this breadth model is going to be. And so what I've done is I put levels on for the bullish and bearish signals, and then I put it together in one model. And there we can see I've also got a five-day, 200-day cross for a confirmation signal. But the breadth model had a bit of a flip. It got bullish for a few days, four days, and then flipped back to bearish. And it's currently on a bearish signal for the S&P 500. But I broke it down and looked at the NASDAQ 100. And the NASDAQ 100 breath model turned bullish in mid-May and remains bullish. And there's also a short-term model. And the short-term model turned bullish in late April and remains bullish. But I'll be following those up on TrendInvestorPro.com. And just a note, if you want to subscribe... I'm going to be off uh, the week uh, from the 4th to the 11th of July, and there won't be any reports that week. Uh, but if you do subscribe, you can still get access to those models, and you also can get the master chart list and the essential breadth indicator chart list. Now, as I said with the bullish percent index, I consider it to be like an intermediate kind of short-term indicator that can uh, change if we get a move below that reaction low that we forged a week or so ago. And a longer-term indicator would be the percentage above the 200-day EMA. 200 days is a long time, nine months or so. And so if you're above that exponential moving average, you're in some sort of a long-term uptrend. And I took the sector, SPDRs, as well as small caps and mid caps, and I'm ranking them by the percentage above the 200-day EMA. And we can see three sectors that are really strong. That would be technology, healthcare, and staples. Over 60% of their stocks are above the 200-day EMA. And then we get industrials and materials, over 50%. And then there's your benchmark, the S&P 500. 48% above the 200-day. That's like a coin flick, half above, half below. And then it deteriorates. Consumer discretionary, only 41% above the 200-day. Mid-caps and small caps, less than 40%. Finance, less than 30%. So this is clearly the weakest of the big sectors, the finance sector, because fewer than 30% of its stocks are above the 200-day. So longer term, the picture is more mixed, if you will. You've got some sectors showing strength, but you still got a lot of weakness out there. Another way you can find where the leaders are and where the leaders are not, or even the laggards, is by looking at the high-low percent indicators for the sectors and some of the major indexes. And that's what I've done here. I'm sorting by the high-low percent value. So you can see the NASDAQ 100, 21%. So that means 21% of its components hit a new high at least. I think there were zero new lows, but it's new highs minus new lows divided by total issues. And the other leaders, communication services and technology, they are, of course, part of the NASDAQ 100. Then you have healthcare, and then you have the S&P 500. And then it kind of drops off. Then we get the consumer discretionary, plus 3%, big deal. Small caps, plus 2%. Finance, 1.5%. Industrials, not much happening. And then zeros the rest of the way. All right, so that concludes this video from TrendInvestorPro.com. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks again for tuning in and have a great day.